also at 18, Cole Knubel, uh, Mike's kid, going into what, his second year at Mike? Notre Dame? Yes. Um, but he was passed over one time in the draft. He was also— The Flyers took him at yeah, age 19, he, so he's a year— He might have only had one year after being drafted, but he's basically as old as a guy who has had two years. Spent some drafted. time in the USHL, uh, was at the uh, National Team Development Program for a cup of coffee— and now is going into his second NCAA season. What is Cole Knubel's potential? Like, you both have him on your list. Right. Um, but I'm a little lower. You but. have him a little lower. Ultimately, he comes in at number 18, tied with Hunter McDonald. What is it about this kid that all of us kind of went, oh, is this just a nepotism pick? Like, That's what, what I If his was. last name wasn't Knubel, would the Flyers would he even be on their radar? It seems like he's doing okay uh, at Notre Dame, 20 points in 36 games. What's his theoretical upside here? He had a very good second half. So first half of his uh, freshman year at Notre Dame, barely scored. From what I've heard, or at least this is what the Flyers have, have claimed, that he wasn't playing poorly. It was just he was snake, but he couldn't score. That said, guys that are really good scorers find ways to make an impact. They don't Usually. do like the two points in the first 16 games that he did in the first half of his freshman year with Notre Dame. Second half, though, 18 points in his final 20. So he it clicked for him. He started scoring. Now, if you look at the season overall, you know, 20 points in 36 games, not that great. And if this was just a case of he was abnormally unlucky in the first half and abnormally lucky in the second and, and actually 20 points in 36 games <clears> is his true talent level, probably not that special a prospect. If it turns out, though, that 18 points in 20 games is his true talent level, mm. and that's what he's going to do over a full season as a sophomore, suddenly you're looking at an intriguing prospect. I think he tops out as a good fourth-line center, though. Mm. Like I, I look at him, a guy who, who I would... You know, I think it's kind of his best-case scenario, and this is maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a little low. I think Alex looks at him as a guy who maybe he could be a 3C. I look at Cole Knubel, and I'm like, he could be a Blair Betts. Ah. Uh. And like... For a fourth round He's pick, if, fine. if you get a legitimately good yeah. fourth line center for three, four, five years, mm. fair. I will say, while there seems to be quite a difference between he and Mike Knubel's game, I mean, just based on, you know, Mike Knubel, 6'3", 230, Cole, uh, what are we looking at here? 5'11", 180. Um, He's smaller. Definitely smaller Mike than Mike Knubel his dad. Tiny, was tiny man. a late bloomer. He was. Uh didn't score really much at all. Had a couple of decent seasons before 30. But in 2002-03, uh, age 30, puts up 30 goals for the first time in his career. Maybe late blooming is... It's in the canoe blood. A, 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 in something their DNA. that gets handed down. And thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you to all of our diehards. We couldn't do what we do here without you. Uh, if you're not a diehard, sign up at allphly.com. Very much appreciate all the support we get from our diehards across the All City universe. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, if he wasn't a canoeble, would he be in the system? Probably not. And I just can't. I can't form any kind of opinion on a Blair Betts potential. Like it's, it's so insignificant to me. Like, all right. All right. Like when you, if you, you end need up these with Blair, guys, yeah, you need the guys. If you end up with but, Blair Betts, it's like, all right, he's fine. But like, I can't bring myself to like conjure an emotion. It just seems about a pick that might while, be Blair Betts. While it's exciting. Like, it's cool that we have Cole Knubel. Like dope. I'm glad that we have someone in the family. Um, yeah, it's nice. It just seems as if it's more of what we already have. Like, we have a whole bunch of dudes who so are going to be on our third and fourth line. Fourth our lines. third and fourth lines are going to be stocked for the rest of the time I'm doing this professionally, it well, feels well, like. there's a reason why he was ranked 18. I, I know. <laughs> I, I'm just uh, talking about upside. Like, it's just not someone, as we keep moving up this list, it feels like we're going to have more and more of these guys. Not as many as you would think. Okay. I think once once you get to around the 14, 13, 12 mark, All right. you're getting to guys who have actual upside. Let's now, they, now they might have higher risk, but like Massimo Rizzo is either going to be a top six NHL forward or is going to be a total bust. Like that is not a, well, he's a bottom sixer. That was one of the things that was annoying me today on Twitter. People were like, they only have bottom sixers. They have a lot of guys who like 
they have scoring upside. Now, they're probably going to bust, which is why they're not ranked in the top 10. But if they hit, they're not going to be just fourth liners. They're going to be middle sixers, if not top sixers. That's fun. Just saying. Yeah, I, 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 think, I, think it is a, I think it is an unfair way to present the, the prospect pipeline. I would agree. And I was getting a lot of people on my mentions today on Twitter parroting something that seemingly has become conventional wisdom that I don't think is fair it's, to be conventional wisdom. It feels left over from a previous era of draft. Picks. It's very, very left over. Yeah. Like guys like Spencer Gill, like he is not a, well, maybe he's going to be a third pair defenseman. Like, yeah, that is a plausible outcome. And again, I will make the point I made before. Think about everything. Really think about everything in life, but think about everything in hockey too much. in terms of plausible outcomes. Spencer Point Gill, flip. yes, there is a, you know, there is a very large chance he's a bust. There's a reason why he slipped around two, despite being a six foot four right-handed shooting defenseman. There is a lot of plausible outcomes where he gets a bit better, but tops out as a third pair defenseman. But there's also plausible outcomes where he bulks up, improves on his puck skills like they think he can, and suddenly he's a number three defenseman on the depth chart, or maybe he's a second number two. Like, he has that kind of upside. It's not like the Flyers just have guys who are only going to end up as fourth liners or third pair defensemen. They have a lot of guys who are bigger swings, and I don't think they're getting enough credit for that. We all city like the mayor. 